Um, hi everyone, welcome to this video on how to be a champion in affecting positive change in your organization and how to advocate for a solution that you believe will be a catalyst for that change. Well, that was a mouthful, so what do we mean by that? Well, have you been in a situation where you knew things could be improved? And you think you may even know a way to improve the situation, but you're not sure how to move forward. Well, in this video, we'll walk through a framework that most organizations go through to identify and implement these kinds of changes. And we'll talk about how to advocate for your idea in a way that aligns with your leadership's visions, uh, ultimately leading to the change that you're seeking. So I'm Satoshi Asari, uh, Chief Product Officer here at Luminoso, where we provide AI-driven text analytics. I'm really grateful today to be joined by two experts on this topic. So they'll be speaking about experiences um, that they've had in their sales roles over many, many years, uh, working with their customers and prospects to guide them through this process. So without further ado, we have John Giannopoulos, who's the VP of Sales, um, also here at Luminoso, and Bob Clark, uh, who's the Managing Partner at Marketing Analysts. Uh, so thanks so much for joining me here. Um, you guys want to take a minute or two to introduce yourselves? Sure. Thanks, Satoshi, and thanks everybody for tuning into this session. Uh, I've been with Luminoso a little over 15 months. Um, we specialize in unstructured text, uh, linguistics, AI, and ML. My background over the last 20 years has been primarily in high tech. Uh, I've been lucky enough to have seen three different generations of technology. And over the last several years involved in SaaS platforms, big data, and AI. I'm happy to share my experiences on this uh, session and look forward to um, a good discussion. Thanks, John. Uh, I'm Bob Clark, and as Satoshi said, I'm managing partner at Marketing Analysts. We're a primary market research and insight firm. Uh, we uh, work with clients globally, a lot of Fortune 50 clients. Uh, we do not only strategic research, but a lot of messaging research and pricing research as well. I was uh, uh, been with a number of companies, including a company called Opinion Research Corporation and Nielsen over the years, uh, over my career. And, um, you know, happy to share uh, my point of view on uh, how we've helped clients in the past and continue to do so now. Great. Well, thanks for that. And thanks again for joining me today here. Um, all right. So let's get started with sort of, um, you know, an overview of a framework or a journey. So, you know, before we get into the meat of the discussion with uh, Bob and John. Of course, each organization will have their own specific processes and steps, right? But this should but they will generally incorporate these kinds of concepts, I think. So, um, you know, so, I, so again, at a high level, the steps are gonna be, um, you know, to define the pain, right? So I, I think the audience here, you've already, you know, kind of defined the pain, you've come up with, um, you know, something that you think could be better, uh, right? So the next step after that is to put that pain in the context of the business. Or sort of again, you know, on, on the flip side. So if you resolve this pain, um, you know, what is the benefit? What is the opportunity? Um, you, you know, that you'll you'll realize by solving the pain. Um, and then the step after that is to seek alignment. You know, maybe with your manager, maybe with sort of the executive leadership of the company, maybe with your peers. Um, so again, to create some alignment, um, you know, around the idea that you have. Um, and then after that, you would identify some solutions you might have. You might already have something in mind, but usually you'd want to do some due diligence, right? To make sure that there aren't alternatives that may even be better solutions. Um, and then finally armed, you know, with, with the alignment and the opportunity and, uh, you know, some proposed solutions, um, you know, you build a pitch, um, that you can, you know, get approved, hopefully get approved by, uh, you know, your management team or your leadership team to be able to move forward. Um, so just to put it a little bit more in context, let's go through like a really simple scenario, right? So this would, um, so let's say in this case, the pain is you're at work and you're constantly having a pain, uh, like a, like a literal physical pain in your back. Um, right. So that's the pain. 
Um, and so, and, and that causes you to, you know, have to get up and walk around often, uh, you know, maybe stretch or whatever, and, and, you know, and the pain distract you from your work. Um, so the opportunity is, well, if you can somehow resolve your back pain, um, you know, you'll be more productive, you would be less distracted, more focused, get more done, um, you know, and then ju just also generally be happier at work, right? So that's the opportunity. Um, so in this particular example, you probably just need to talk to your manager, right? And say, hey, I really think, um, you know, the chair that I'm sitting in using at work is causing this back pain. You know, if I had a better chair that had some better back support, um, and you know, things like that and, and put me in a better posture. I think, you know, my, you know, I can alleviate this back pain, make me more productive, um, you know, make me sort of be happier and more relaxed at work. Um, so, and then in, during that alignment, I think, you know, as long as, you, you know, assuming your manager agrees that this would be a good idea or worth exploring, um, you probably want to get a sense of, you know, what the parameters are, right? Um, can you go buy a $1,000 chair or is there, you know, a budget constraint or, you know, a consideration that you have to keep in mind? So with that information, you would go find maybe a couple solutions, you know, maybe two or three chairs that you can find, um, you, you know, and then you would sort of build a pitch um, to say to your boss, hey, here's option one. I think this will work. It's, you know, within the budget. Here's a, here's a, what I think could be a better version. It's slightly over the budget, um, you know, and so you'd make a pitch um, and, you know, and then hopefully you get one of those chairs. Um, resolves your pain, makes you happier, more productive. Um, so hopefully that simple example helps um, to, to, to paint the picture a little bit more clearly. Um, so, but of course, in a business context, um, you know, if you're trying to, champion a change for you know a technology solution or a service solution or something like that or you know of course it'll be a little bit more complicated um so let's bring you know bob and john into the conversation here right so so let's start let's go through each of these steps so let's start with step one identifying the pain or defining the pain uh bob john so like you know how would you coach or provide advice to you know our listeners and viewers here about this first step um how can they sort of set them up set themselves up for success by doing a good job at defining the pain thanks satoshi um <clears throat> in my view of the world individual pain is, is really a gauge of success uh, at work but it's also a feeling that you have the right tools the right processes in place to help you succeed professionally whatever your job or role might be within an organization. Many times defining the pain uh, also involves having a very clear understanding of the opportunity cost involved in not solving the pain. Um, <clears throat> and many times uh, defining the pain requires figuring out a good way to quantify in simple to understand measurable terms that others can gravitate towards. Um, many times we find ourselves in, in many organizations large and small where there's a tremendous amount of work being done by a, a number of people in a manual fashion if you can imagine you're part of a, a customer service and support organization that's manually reading trouble tickets in order to garner insights about what's happening uh, with their clients in real time uh, without um, um, you know a, a way to to do that um, at scale Many times uh, you might find only two and a half percent of the data is actually uh, being looked at and analyzed. And huge decisions are being made off a fraction of that data. You really have to understand the current process that you have in place, uh, how much and what sorts of uh, information you're tasked uh, with, challenge, challenge with um, understanding how many resources, how long it takes to drive insights, is there any bias or risk involved? Um, how big is the problem? And can you quantify it in terms of dollars and cents, productivity, uh, revenue, uh, time uh, to insights? Um, in a luminosa world, this is sort of the, the, the process that we follow uh, to help a client understand what the pain is, both on a individual level, but also 
um, in, in a broader context. Thanks, John, for that uh, insight. So let's uh, let's move to step two. So the step two is sort of you know taking that uh, the pain that you've identified um, and sort of turning it on the flip side and and defining or identifying the opportunity um, you know that would come from from addressing that pain. Um, so here, um, you know, John and Bob again, if you can add some color, that'd be great. Yeah, so, sure. you know, as John said, you know, it really starts with the personal pain, you know, what's the pain to the individual, um, but really broadening that to the organization is the next step in the process here. And, um, you know, really that comes down to, you know, what is it that the organization would benefit from if this were to be solved, you know, and then to really look at it there, things like increasing revenue, reducing cost, creating a, a, a unique competitive advantage, um, you know, something around, uh, really creating interest in this pain being solved for the organization. And that's making it bigger than the individual and bringing that uh, sort of out of there. Um, you know, and, and that's that part is critical as, as well. Um, an example I can think of uh, is something in, in my career where it was with a technology client um, I, I was working with. And really in that situation, uh, they were asked to do more um, with less. And this is common really with a lot of companies, you know, in today's economic uh, environment in particular, but over time that's, this has happened, uh, you know, a lot. And that's basically how can our group do more with less resources, less people, things like that. And, and in this example, you know, the pain was to the individual who was heading this organization and they were a market insights uh, function within a large technology company. Um, they were told to reduce the size of their team, but to do more work and more impactful work. Um, and through that effort, effort uh, or through that uh, pain, the leader of that team reached out to me to sort of problem solve with him to figure out how the organization could benefit accomplishing its KPIs uh, with you know less people, less resources, and having it be more impactful, more strategic. So, okay, so, you know, with your pain and opportunity identified, um, you know, next step is to seek alignment and, and you know, potentially this could be one of the more challenging steps, right? That if, if you're not sort of acc accustomed to doing this kind of thing. Um, so, you know, as we talked about earlier, alignment could mean with, you know, your, your manager, your executive team, your peers, your colleagues, um, you know, it could be, it could mean a lot of different things. Um, so how about in this step, um, what are some, uh, you know, pointers or, or some examples that you guys can talk about? Ident recognizing the fact that you're not alone, that you're in an organization that, you know, folks have probably similar uh, challenges and so forth uh, is really essential. Knowing that and knowing that, uh, you know, that you're not alone is really, really essential, I think, because uh, that'll give you the confidence from which to, uh, you know, move forward with which to move forward uh, with this. Uh, really seeking alignment. In, in my and in my experience, it really starts with that, but also really with a specific definition of solution options. In other words, crystallizing around what this, the real problem is and then how, you know, what some potential solution options might be and being able to convey that over and again to different stakeholders uh, within the organization. Um, starting with your own level within within your company, you know, your your peers, your your colleagues and and that and then getting sort of people behind the the, the solution behind identifying the problem as bigger than than just yourself and, and really an organizational problem. Um, and then really assessing the, you know, the viability of a solution around this problem being something people can get behind. A number of years ago, I was working with Google, uh, who was on a mission to uh, literally make the web better um, for initially human consumption. But at the end of the day, if you kind of dug into what Google meant by that, <clears throat> their, their real goal was to create a more indexable web page. Why? Because their search algorithms would work. And that is what was driving their business. The group that I was working with had limited budget and uh, didn't have the uh, uh, visibility across the organization. Um, and it became pretty clear that we needed um, uh, to seek alignment across different parts of the organization, not just vertically within 
um, the specific team that they were reporting into. And so we work with product teams across advertising, across search, and a number of other organizations, including procurement at the end of the day, to align and to make sure that we understood how investing in a particular path, a technology or a solution, would add business value across the organization. Um, and it's really that kind of uh, effort. Um, multiple stakeholders across different parts of the organization who have different goals and objectives, but need to align with the umbrella uh, 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 initiative that you're trying to bring uh, to fruition. So, yeah, I mean, I think definitely, you know, depending on the scope, um, you know, of the pain and the change that you're trying to advocate for, I think the, the, you know, the number of groups and stakeholders you probably need to bring into that, the alignment process will, will change, I think. So, um, all right. So, so with that alignment um, accomplished or achieved, um, you know, the next step is to, you, you know, maybe you, you're tasked yourself with, um, you know, identifying the solution or some, some possible solutions. Um, so, so what about in this step? Um, you know, what are some, some things that maybe, you know, the viewers want to keep in mind as, as they, um, you know, get into this step of identifying the solution? The key word here, and it probably should be underlined, is reasonable, reasonable options, right? There are going to be options to, uh, you know, you know that make perfect sense and options that are way off, you know, off the uh, wall here. Um, but reasonable solutions, meaning, you know, solutions that can fit a budget, can fit an environment, can solve a problem. You know, and and those those are sometimes difficult to find because the, of the you know st stakeholder wins, right? What's a win for one stakeholder may not be a win for another. So finding that at the earlier step there about stakeholder alignment is essential to really being able to understand what solutions might fit. Um, assessing the benefits, and that goes along with it too. Assessing the benefits for the the stakeholders involved and uh, the benefits to the organization for the solutions that you're you're looking into as well, and then you know the solutions that fit with the business environment. If a company is growing and there's a challenge around growth and that's the problem, the pain point that's been identified, solutions around that are very different than uh, in an environment where the business is declining or there's a you know constraints around the business that are that are painful in a different way. Yeah, and just to, to add uh, some more context, I mean, at the end of the day, we at this point in the process, we've, we've identified, um, or I should say defined the pain, we've, we've quantified the business value, not only for ourselves, but also across the organization. We've concluded a, a vendor search and have come up with a short list uh, of clients or, or partners that I think we can work with. That usually comes down to a recommendation of the best available solution uh, and at the right price point, especially given today's economic client. Uh, but I think there's a number of intangibles that one has to take into consideration in terms of recommending or identifying a solution. Yeah, some great points for, for sure. Um, yeah, and I think I would just add that, you know, during this phase, um, you know, it's probably important to continue to, you know, work with your the team of advocates that you've, um, you know, you formed during the previous alignment stage, right? So, um, you, you know, make sure that you're kind of nurturing that that group of people that you've aligned with um, and making sure, you, you know, keeping them sort of, um, you know, in the loop as you um, uh, explore some of these solutions and then, you know, ultimately kind of come up with, you know, your suggestions, I would, th I would think. Um, so, all right, so you've done all this work now. So let's, let's, let's get to the, the end here, the punchline. So now you got to build a pitch to, to get your leadership, your manager, um, you know, whoever to, to actually make this investment, um, and to make the change that you're seeking. Um, so what do you think here? What, what should, what should, what should we keep in mind as we, as we try to, as we wrap this up and, you know, get the try to get the change that we want implemented. At this point, you've got to tell the story in uh, language that the audience will understand. We talked a lot earlier uh, about different groups within an organization having perhaps different goals and maybe even having different metrics. We, we've got to make sure that the umbrella concept we're trying to put forward is addressing the needs of those groups um, and is 
taking the quantifiable metrics or quantifiable business value that we defined earlier in the process and applying it to, to those uh, parts of the organization. And as I mentioned, um, don't forget, whatever solution path you decide uh, to put on the top of your list, there has to be an in integration plan. And that amount of time it takes to have you and your team members become power users of any solution uh, has to be taken into consideration in the timing of achieving KPI metrics. Well, I think I think the stakeholder alignment <clears throat> in all this is really one of the one of the key points here, and, and it's not just a one time thing. It's throughout the process, and it's about communication, open communication, being, um, you know, putting it all out there so that as as the uh, solution to the pain point is evolves and the and you build the pitch that that you know there are no surprises. I think you hit it on, hit it on the head. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that not be the case, where you, you're going down a path, you think you're on the same page, and then all of a sudden something comes out of, I suppose, left field, but by by somebody who's either funding it or has to integrate it or whatever, whatever the it is, in a way that uh, can solve problems, and then and then everything gets derailed and it becomes a waste of time. Um, so I think open communication with the stakeholders about the solution and about the impact on the business is a continuous thing throughout this process. So you know, so speaking of stakeholders and the decision, um, you know, I mean, you're gonna have sort of different people coming from different perspectives, right? Um, and different personalities, different tendencies, and things like that. So um, you guys want to talk a little bit to this slide? Sure. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, the people that are supporting whatever initiative you're putting on the table typically have a pretty good understanding of the needs uh, of, of the individuals, the needs of the business, and how those are aligned in whatever proposal you've put on the table for departmental approval or organizational approval. Um, the, the folks who are not necessarily aligned, the, the no-sayers, are probably feeling some sort of a budget crutch challenge. Multiple competing priorities, and you're trying to, you know, insert um, an important initiative uh, into an existing process, and there's no room, there's no budget. I think that is really important to understand, and the challenges that that no sayer is having. Um, it really makes a lot of sense to step back for a moment and try to articulate that you're probably already spending the budget right so for example we have a number of other people like me we're all struggling with the same pain and we're all you know spending time and not able to get all of the work that we need to done so that is an investment the company's making um what you're advocating for perhaps is a, a shifting of existing expenditure as opposed to a net new ad, which might be a good way to align with mm -hmm. sayers. Presented in terms of, we're not asking you for more money, what we're asking you to do is to shift money from one bucket to another by adding uh, a layer of technology and automation to address my pain and our, our pain collectively. Um, and represent a tangible business metric, which represents the upside. So for example, if I can do X, Y, and Z within my initiative, and I can drive our NPS score up one point, I can demonstrate to you 0.147% increase in top line growth. So not only am I not asking you for a net new ad, uh, I'm shifting existing investiture, but I'm also putting cycles back into our team and uh, I have tremendous upside for the organization. Um, you know, different folks on the stakeholder journey really are different stakeholders have different wins and different things that, uh, you know, one could be budget, one could be I want to go home at five o'clock, another could be I want to get promoted. Whatever those wins are, really understanding that early on will help you avoid the uh, bottom part, the bottom right hand uh, part of the slide. You know, when you run across a no sayer, um, you know, not just to continue to push your own agenda, but to, to you know to try to put yourselves in their shoes, right, and to empathize and 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 try to understand why they're saying no, because um, mm -hmm. it could be, um, you know, that they just feel threatened or 
or maybe they're just averse to change or something who knows right but great um so i think we wanted to finish up um just kind of briefly talking about you know a couple sort of sales philosophies or or, or frameworks because uh, i think that you know these frameworks obviously incorporate a lot of um you know what we've discussed um you know they're presented a little bit from the sales uh, person's um perspective but i think it'll still be really helpful and you know add some more insights to this conversation so yeah no i think you know again this is really flipping it around and say okay how, how do folks really look into from the sales side how do they look at um you know, working with a, a company, right, to, to get in the door, to build a relationship, to do business over time, to have that, um, you know, client or prospect, I suppose, uh, become a client and then become a, a you know, a, a pillar of, of of their business. And this framework from Miller Hyman has been around for many years. It's evolved from different, uh, you know, different uh, input over the years. This is the a more contemporary view of it. Um, I won't get into detail on the slide, but basically, Miller Hyman uh, purports uh, or puts forth, I suppose, that there are different buying influences within a company, right? Um, um, and those could be uh, economic buyers, right? For instance, who hold the purse strings, tend to hold the purse strings, and they can release budget or not. Technical buyers who need to make a solution that's proposed to a company work within that organization. Um, user buyers, people who consume um, whatever that um, uh, service or product is within an organization. They they take it and they make use of it within the company. And then the fourth uh, buying influence really is is uh, what's called re referred to as a coach, someone who's willing to take the time to have somebody who offers a solution understand the way the organization runs, who you know who 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 the different buying influences are, the other ones that I just mentioned, and then how their solution can get noticed. You know, a whether it's something that's viable, potentially viable you know, be what the different wins for the buying influences are and then how to fit that uh, within the environment. This is somebody who in an organization is taking the time to uh, make sure that you're not wasting your time as somebody presenting a solution and that the stakeholders are uh, time is not wasted either within a company. So I won't go into the details on the slide, but this framework is something that people uh, who are, are selling into an organization may use as a way to assess opportunities. Great, thanks for that. Um, and then let's let's go over one more. Um, uh, that's maybe a little bit more, I don't know, newer, I guess. But um, John, do you want to talk about this one? Sure, sure. So MEDIC as a acronym has been around for many, many years. This is uh, a defined uh, business development process that's really supported and used by world class uh, organizations. Um, I thought it would be applicable in today's discussion because it kind of represents a, a, a kind of a, a success predictor model, right? A, a set of checkpoints that you need to make sure are checked. Um, uh, although there are no guarantees, it kind of represents part of the defined plan, and it's part of the diligence of making sure that uh, I'm, I'm doing all the T's and dotting all the I's um, in pursuit. Um, of a specific initiative or objective and it's got a lot of value so so i mean i think both of those um you know kind of highlight the the importance of that alignment step in that process right making sure that you've involved and aligned with all of the people that need to be aligned in order to move things forward um so i think we just wanted to wrap up kind of by you know going back to the beginning um you know to, 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 to the five steps that we just talked about. Um, hopefully the some of the experiences, the stories, um, you know, and the insights that that Bob and John were able to to provide have been helpful. Well, Bob and John, thank you again so much for you know taking the time to to record this video. Um, you know, hopefully it's been helpful for for the viewers. Um, and yeah, and as John mentioned, um, you know, here's the contact information for Bob and John. Feel free to, you know, reach out if you want to learn more about what, um, you know, marketing analysts and women also do. Um, or if you just want to pick their brains, if you're going through this process yourself and, you know, if you feel like you could benefit from a quick chat with either of them, I'm sure they'd be happy to, get, uh, you know, provide that time. So thank you again, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video.